Hi everyone. For this next video, I wanted to take a quick minute to show you OBS, or as you see, Open Broadcast Software. Uh, this is a really robust tool that will allow you to create presentations, record yourself, and even stream if you're looking into that. So it's a, it's a really robust and in-depth uh, tool that you have access to, but keep in mind that other uh, screen and video recording software uh, is set up fairly similarly, but uh, might not offer quite the same functionality. I've been using this one for several years, so it's my favorite, but if for some reason it doesn't work for you for whatever reason, go ahead and search for some others. Um, I know that on at least the Windows App Store, there are several free and relatively inexpensive options. Uh, but I wanted just to give you a quick overview of what you can do with it. Uh, keep in mind, like some of the other videos, this isn't meant to be comprehensive. This just covers the basics you need to get started. And once you get started, then you can look at specific tutorials for the areas you might have questions about. So just to get started, uh, here is what the homepage looks like. You'll see that it's just obsproject.com or you can search for OBS Studio and you'll be, you'll find uh, the links for the downloads for your um, OS of choice. It's uh, pretty straightforward. And I want to remind you that this is a free version. What I'm showing you is free uh, that you can use. It does not cost anything. There are ways you can contribute uh, and pay more for some other things, but the core of it is free. So that's what I'm basing this off of. So this is what the, the website looks like where you download it. Now, quick uh, little flashing light slash uh, eye irritant warning. Um, I don't think I'd go so far as to say seizure warning, but for some of this that I'm gonna be showing you, it's gonna be a little bit flashy just because it's showing you what I'm showing you, what I, you'll see what I mean. So with, uh, with that, I'm gonna open up OBS here. So immediately you are going to be greeted by um, several options down below and obviously a screen within a screen within a screen. Um, I'm gonna turn that off for now uh, so that it's not picking the display capture. Actually, I think I am going to keep it on. So sorry if it looks a little weird, but I need to be able to show you what I'm doing. So OBS allows you to basically record whatever you would like and create videos out of that. So you can choose, as you see down here, your display, you can create text, you can pull an audio. So right now I'm pulling from my Audi, or my uh, Yeti mic, uh, and you can just record anything you want. So you'll see right now over on the right, I am recording what uh, we are doing. So what you are seeing is literally what I'm recording here, including all the, the bottom options. Uh, before you get started with any of this, I'm just going to show you some of the options to be aware of. Um, up under settings, this is where you're going to find your all of your information uh, for how your video and audio is created. I, I'm not going to go into it here, but I just want to make sure that you spend some time picking the resolution and the audio formats that are specific to your needs and your hardware. You might not have the capability to capture in 4K, you might just need to do 1080p or even 720. That's fine. Go ahead and take a look at the options. And I would suggest finding a tutorial that covers the options in more detail, because as you can see, there is a lot to it here. But the positive of that is that it will let you tailor exactly what you want to do to your specific needs and your hardware. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that you really want to pay attention to, though, is your output. So when you do record a video like we're doing now, uh, make sure you have the output settings and the location that it's going to uh, set up beforehand because when I first started learning, I had no idea where my videos were or why they look so terrible. Uh, it turns out I wasn't sending them to the right place and I did not have any of the formatting uh, set up properly. So pay close attention to that when you set things up and you're learning about it. But the gist of how this works is that you're going to go uh, down here and just add a, a project or a scene as they call it. What you do with this, it will then give you options on sources that you can pull in. So right now I have Display Capture and Yeti. So this is pulling the screen that you're seeing and the Yeti is pulling the microphone that you're hearing me talk from. Adding sources is really simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a, we are going to add a window capture. And what I'm gonna do is create a new. Um, if you've created some in the past, you can add existing. I would just create new until you're familiar with it because sometimes when you pull from an existing capture, if you've adjusted those settings in the past, it'll screw up the uh, the way that it pulls the information and you might not be getting what you need. So when in doubt, just make sure you start a new one, but you'll create a new, you can title it whatever you want. I'm just gonna do window capture seven and you wanna make sure the source is visible. 
So you see that uh, you can choose what is being pulled for the window. So if you have several windows open, like let's say you had uh, a game open for some reason and you had Chrome open and then you had the calculator open and whatever else, uh, you can pull, or let's say a PDF. So I've done that in the past. I've had a PDF up as well. You can choose which window it's capturing and the way that it's captured. So now uh, if you click OK, you'll notice that uh, it, instead of showing you the display, it's showing you what is on my uh, Chrome tab down here. So that's what you can do. Uh, you can do that with any type of source. And let me show you some of the others. So you'll see you can do audio input, audio output, your browser, color, display, game, image. There's a lot there, as you can see. And I encourage you to play around with this because uh, it's pretty straightforward. And if you mess something up, all you need to do is click on the, oh, I'll do this. Uh, you click on the display capture and you just remove it. And it'll ask if you want to. And there you go. Um, we now just keep the window capture, but I'm gonna go and add my display capture back because I wanna show you what we're doing. As you can see, capture method, the display, it should pull up your monitor. Um, and you do wanna capture the cursor generally so that I can point at what I'm doing. So we're back to the display capture. <clears throat> the other thing you can do is add text. I really like this if you're presenting something and you wanna have bits of information. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to go down to your plus. Again, this is where you're gonna find all of your sources. Uh, and include text. Um, I'm just going to name it basic text. And then you can choose the font. Like with most presentation tools, you can add the thousands of fonts that you want, the font style, the font size, and any of these other writing systems. So there's a lot to it. I'm just going to keep it standard for now. You can play around with this. I don't need to go through every single option, but So I typed a lovely grammatical sentence. Um, I'm just gonna keep the color, actually let's make it red just for fun. We'll make it sort of this bright neon red. So you'll see, um, it makes it a little hard to see, but you can place this text, just like when you're using um, Canva or other um, presenting tools, you can take the text and drag it around so that it appears either at the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen and so on. And you have transformation tools with this. So you'll see down here under the basic text, you can right click on it, or you can click on it uh, up in the actual window. But I'm gonna click on it down here and you can add filters, transform it. So you can, for example, stretch or fit to screen. That way it's not going out of the bounds. So now you'll see that it's it fits within the bounds of the screen. Um, let's also make it, uh, move a little bit. So under the filters, this is where you can add some effects beyond the specific font, style, and color, and things like that. If you click plus, you'll see that there are a variety of in-depth tools that you can do to the text, depending on your needs. Uh, just for this, I'm going to use scroll. Uh, feel free to play around with all these later on on your own if you're interested, but scroll. This does exactly what you think, and I'm going to go with a horizontal scroll. Right now it's set to zero. You can drag the bar and you'll see as I'm dragging it, it gets faster and faster and faster. I'm gonna make it really fast uh, just for fun. Um, you can set a loop or you can have it set to do uh, a single stream like that. Um, I'm gonna keep it on loop for now just so that you can see it. And yes, this is why I said uh, maybe seizure warning because it does get pretty weird. Actually, it looks really cool. Anyway, um, fun house aside. Uh, so you can add text and like I said, when you click on it, you can move it around as you need, uh, wherever you want. And you can really add other media sources. So if you want to include a video of yourself, you can also do that. Let me adjust my camera. If you have a webcam and you want to present with your actual body, uh, you'll have to forgive the mess because as of my current recording, I'm getting ready for a track day. So some of the stuff's in the background, but I will show you that you can add uh, that, where is it? Video capture device. So I've set it up as my webcam. Um, sometimes it, this can be a little bit tricky depending on, um, like I've said, what you've done in the past. So I've found that sometimes I just need to go in and add and subtract the source a few times to get it to remove. I don't know why. Um, I think sometimes that has to do with opening OBS as uh, running it as an administrator. So you'll want to run as an administrator. I found that that has an impact on it for some reason. I did not do that this time, so that might be 
part of the case, but whatever the ca cause might be, um, let me pull up my video and I'll show you. Okay, now we got it working. Um, I just had to pull from a different source. Uh, you'll see that this is my, if you look down at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see that this is my uh, video input. So you can do any sort of video presentation style you want. If that includes you want to actually show your face, you can use, you can even use a green screen if you have one. There are ways that you can go about doing that if you want to present information on the green screen. So it's really robust. And as with the other elements, um, try not to get dizzy you can move it around. So you'll see I am moving around. I am also going to be able to resize it if I want. And you can also transform which layer it's on. Um, just like most photo uh, editing software, you can actually change the order. So if you go to the properties, or if you right click on it and you transform uh, and order, you can move it to the bottom. So you'll see that it's beyond, behind all the layers now. And then you can do the same thing if you wanna move it to the top. Um, or you can move it in steps so that it's above and some things and below another. So um, let's actually really quickly try that with the text. So I'm going to bring the text, move it to the top. Um, I'm going to move the window capture to the bottom. Let's see if this works. Move it to the bottom. And then we're going to take my uh, video and we're going to move it up one. And we're going to keep doing that. So now you'll see it's above the background screen, but it's below the text. So if you really want to get precise and creative with this, there is a lot to do there. Um, just a few other things that I want to point out as we are taking a look at this is down below, you'll see this is where your scenes are. This is where your source is. Um, the audio mixer, this shows you the audio levels for your input. So um, this one is not active, as you can see, because it's the microphone in my camera. Um, the desktop audio, this is what pulls from your system sound. So let's say you wanna watch a YouTube video or have music playing in the background. Uh, this is where you would do that. You can pull the audio from your desktop. And then this is your audio source, which you'll see translates over here to the Yeti microphone. Um, obviously the audio levels are how loud things are. Or quiet they are. So that's what all that means. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this basic principle of creating videos and sound mixers and things like that. But I just wanted to give a quick overview on how those work. Uh, over here, you're gonna see when you're done recording, you just click stop recording. Um, and as with the other things that I've said, there are a lot more options to go into, but this is just for you to get a taste of. Um, and down below, you'll be able to see your recording time and your frames per second. This is an important one. I like to always record at 60 FPS, uh, just a personal preference, but you'll be able to see your CPU pull, things like that that are just important to know uh, how your system's doing and its overall health. Um, I think that covers just about everything you're going to need to know to get started. Uh, let me move, let me remove some of these so it's not quite as distracting anymore. Um, and let's, yeah, we'll keep, um, Window capture, yeah, good enough. So that is how you work with most of these uh, options. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I know it sounds, it looks and sounds a little bit complicated, but in reality, if you just give it a try uh, and play around with some of the settings, the worst that can happen is if you mess up one of your scenes, just delete the whole thing and start fresh because it's uh, a learning experience and a trial experience. Oh, one other thing I wanna point out is that you can even include uh, images if you pull them from your image folder. So if you clicked image, you can go into your um, picture folder, wherever it might be on your computer. And just like I had a little box for my webcam, you can include a picture there. So let's say you want to have a webcam in the bottom right corner and you want to have a picture of something relevant in the background or up in the top right, you can do that. And as you've seen with uh, the screens, you can adjust where they fit. So you can have maybe your uh, window display on one side and a picture on another. Really, I don't need to list all the options that you can do with it. The, the point is that you can get really creative with how you're using all these so that you can present in exactly the way that you want. So most of the videos that you'll see either in classes or through other presentations, I've used this exact same process to create. So that'll give you an idea of what it can do. Um, and keep in mind, I'm a, a novice at this, so I just wanted to give you guys an introductory look at it. Uh, but with that, I think that's everything that you need. And you can ask me, feel free to uh, let me know if you have any questions about this, but 
I would really encourage you to look at more advanced tutorials from experts who use this more frequently if you want to get into the nitty gritty of the options like your recording options or layering your various sources, things like that. So with that, I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video.